Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, <laughs> wherever you are. In the last uh, two ZBrush Live I did, I started a, a, a figurine uh, f based on the fan art uh, from 2B, from the game Nier Automata, uh, from Platinum Games Square Enix. And uh, uh, the first presentation was mainly about building the character, working on the silhouette with uh, uh, background images. Uh, and second step was more about refining a little bit the body, working on the bond eye, uh, the eye bond, sorry, and starting the hairs. And unfortunately for the hairs, it was. Um, I had to stop because it was very long, it's very annoying, boring, it's always, always, always the same step. And I just put online earlier today a video uh, showing the end, I mean, the, the remaining part of the hair's creation. For those of you who really want to see everything, um, then this is this one hour and a half video where I explain again what I did. It's the same at the end of the second video, but well, if you want to follow everything. And um, I also did a quick 3D print. Then uh, this is a model I just uh, uh, polish a little bit and which I will just trash. It was just a test. I started from this model and I just refined it, uh, refined it, um, refined, sorry, uh, the hairs with little bits of some strokes, the eye band as well. I just did the hollowing of the model and then I printed my model again because it's very important to um, to visualize with your own hands and also remember remember that I just uh, sh show you during the last stream this model but it was just a temporary hairs and, and head and now this is oops this one which is uh, quite bigger but uh, with the hairs that you see on the background okay um, but it has some issues, not the hair by itself, uh, but more the 3D print. But just before moving forward the 3D print uh, aspect, um, I, just about the sculpt I did for the hairs, and not the details, just the flow of the hairs. Rem just remind, um, remember that to be is falling. She's just hanging uh, on, uh, on, on her pod then she's falling, then the hairs are, of course, following the, the direction uh, of the head. And for all of these shapes, I'm fine with that, but these, uh, these strips of hairs below, and again, I, I don't know that is how you pronounce the name of uh, uh, these um, strands of hairs, I don't know exactly. These are not in the good direction, I need to refine that. But for now, I will continue to the next step. Okay, uh, but about 3D print, let me just go back to my screenshots. Okay, then this is uh, my quick print, just straight out of the printer, uh, still with a lot of resin on top of um, uh, of the 3D printed model, uh, then before the cleaning process. Uh, let me switch to uh, this one. Um, and at this stage already you can see even before the cleaning if everything is wrong or not. Then the printing was fine except here on this area I had a little small issue. Why? Because this model hasn't been prepared at all. I just uh, optimize in ZBrush but nothing else. While for 3D print you need to take care about having different parts. And you see you have a lot of these pillars everywhere which are support needed to make the the, the piece and all the pieces are growing. And you see for all the hairs at the beginning, you need to have is a, um, a support to help the hairs growing and the face, but you have them everywhere. Let me switch to the next. I will answer some questions just after. Um, then this is just after the cleaning process with the alcohol, the uh, IPA alcohol. Uh, then it's, it, well, it's, nicer to be honest uh, you see that some part which was uh, kind of broken was just some artifact uh, i guess i had some um, solidified resin in my printer i need to filter it uh, but you see that everywhere it's it looks nice of course but before removing the supports um, just for the technical aspect it has been printed on a form one plus at 50 microns per layer um, of course on a form two it 
would have been better, but I just have a form one plus. Um, you can see some layers visible, but you know, after a little bit of sanding or some um, uh, primer painting on top, it's it's pretty clean. And then I'm switching now to after removing the supports. I have two series of photos. Then when you remove the support, unfortunately you need to cut uh, with some tools, this support, and you have a lot of marks. I call that just impact. There is a lot of impact on, on the model, which require a lot of sending and post-process, which is really time consuming. And if all these supports are, um, I mean, on area where you have a lot of details, which is very easy with the brush, it will be a big issue. That's why it's very, very, very important to uh, work in multiple parts. I mean, for the head, it would be way better to have one shape, let's say, for the head itself, another one for, uh, let's say, the neck, uh, can be two parts or just one part, but the hairs in at least one or two parts, just to have the support inside of the model. Or, having some ways to change the orientation of the model uh, to minimize the location of the support. Um, for this next photo, you see this is other point of view, I mean, a, a different point of view of the same print. And um, you see this in, impacts of support are really, really visible. And for some areas, or do you see just below? Imagine that you, you want to send that or just clean that. It's very difficult to access all these areas um, because your tools can't reach uh, all this part. Then it's almost impossible to produce a clean mesh that way. Um, and you see on, on this part, uh, can I zoom in? You see, it's kind of broken and I will, I will try to, to, to not forget about explaining this process, which is very specific to the uh, SLA printing. Uh, you see uh, on very flat areas, uh, which are aligned with the building plates of the printer, you see the layers which are visible. This is only where they are really visible. And again, some sanding is fine. And again, you see the support everywhere. That's why it's it's very, very important to anticipate that. Meaning that when I will prepare my model for 3D printing, I will need to work about where I will split. And if you remember in the second video, I explained that I will split probably on the front part of the hairs. I will keep the hair band by itself and then the back part. And like that, I will be able to change the orientation of my model to be sure that the support will be on area where it will be easy to send or to hide because it will be under the, the hairs. Okay. Um, then um, pixel desire 3D uh, just write uh, wrote in the, the chat that seems like everyone is going from lasps to uh, I can't say I can't give my opinion for a lot of printers at least for SLA because I'm using this printer, I know it very well. It's very popular among uh, um, ZBrush artists. It's kinda expensive, to be honest. It's something around $4,000 euros, approximately. And then you have the, the, the resin, which is expensive. You have the resin tank, which are expensive. It's, yeah, it's expensive, but the quality is here and it's perfect for the brush models. You have other printers which are interesting, but Formlabs has been able to have a large community. They have a good technical support. They have a very good software. And then about the software, this is the second part about 3D printing before switching to the sculpting aspect. This is what you have in um, in the software. Then you need most of this support. And even if uh, uh, I remove some support or I added some support on areas, it's quite a lot and you have on the side uh, this slider which show you how your model is growing during the printing process you can also use the page up page down uh, key on your keyboard to move from one layer to another layer then you can monitor and see where it's growing and let me see you see for the hairs let me zoom in a little bit like that you see where it's growing then you need to have at least one support you see on this area, just to see 
the, the model growing. And you need to have enough support to give some strength because each time you have one layer has been printed by the printer, you have the resin tank with a, a layer, a silicon layer, which will move down or on, on the side for the form too. And it it puts uh, quite some deformation, some um, uh, some stress uh, on your model. Then it can happen that if you don't put enough support or not on the good location, that you have some parts which will just break and it can make your print totally fail. Um, then it's very important to work layer by layer. But again, when I will switch, I will do my presentation, uh, probably something in, in four or five presentation, I will explain all this process. But you need to check all of that. That's why it's, uh, you need to check that you see it's so many layers which are inside. And because on some areas, let me just move quickly. You see, just for the front part of the hair, like that, you need to have some support. But this support needs to be attached to something. And the only thing which is below is some parts of the face. Then even if you just put some support on top, your support can be connected on other parts of your model. That's why the, the more you split your model, of course, it takes more time to prepare your model before, but the less post work you will have before. And this post work about sanding, cleaning, painting, uh, gluing, uh, 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 putting some putty, all these kind of, of things, it's so difficult. Then it's better to prepare your work before. Okay. Um, if you have some questions, uh, you speak about um, uh, I see the Ultimaker Air 2, which is a printer I have, and uh, I can't show you that on the screen because I don't have the file anymore. But uh, of course, I look about printing the same model on the uh, Ultimaker, a little bit bigger. And the support was just madness. I, I had support everywhere. And in fact, I have uh, almost one kilogram and a half of plastic for printing my model because the support was everywhere then it was just a, a big mass of plastic and i say okay there is no way to print that because i need two spools <laughs> of uh, plastic to print the model okay no way let me close that so not saving oh just one thing if you want to experiment even if you don't have a printer but try to understand this support how it's working you can download on uh form on the form labs website formlabs.com the software preform you are you will be able to import some files and see the orientation see all the supports are working it's very instructive if you are looking for 3d printing okay uh, feel free to ask your question again uh, if you want in um, in the chat i will do my best to uh, to answer okay then uh, let's continue let me load pure ref which i forgot uh, where is pure ref? Sorry, just a few seconds. Uh, where is pure ref? Pure ref, come on. Where are you? Ah, okay. Here it is. Okay. Then let me just continue about where I was. And uh, again, like I said, this is a Dynamesh model um, that I did quickly for the 3D print. I just did some quick print to put some volume on, on the hairs. But this is what I will do later. But again, because it's just only a test, I did that quickly. It's not optimized, optimized, not well done, then just temporary. The same for the face. I did some Dynamesh. I just refined the lips a little bit. And I did uh, all the uh, hollowing uh, part of the model to, uh, uh, to avoid using too much resin. Anyway, OK. Then, ah oui, also one thing. Oh, sorry, I said some French time to time, this how we. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, if you remember, when I was working with the sub tools, I, it was each part for the hairs was a separate sub tool. I merged everything, but uh, I have my subdivision levels and 
if I'm looking, it's a different poly groups for each part. And like that, if I want to work on some areas with control and shift, I can quickly isolate uh, uh, some parts uh, to work later then. It's more for after. Okay, then today what uh, I will do, I will um, work a little bit on the pose, not that I want to, to work that much, um, but at least starting to, uh, if you remember, I talked about that the last time, to move a little bit the arms, to be not too close from the uh, the body, from the boost, the, the boost by itself. Uh, I will change a little bit the pose for the legs, uh, but I will keep everything symmetrical so far, because I will work on some part for the clothes, and after I will change uh, um, the pose again to have something which will be uh, less symmetrical, of course. Okay, um, then to work on the pose, nothing very complex. Uh, oh, sorry, one thing. My topology is not very clean so far. You remember, it's uh, uh, this is uh, uh, just a zero measure. I will need to rework on that, but well, it's enough to do some um, some proportion. Uh, let me look about the chat. Okay, nothing. Then. To do the pose, I will use a Transpose Master, which is a, a plugin uh, provided by default with ZBrush. Just one thing before working with most of the plugin with ZBrush, always look that all your uh, file names are uh, uh, just unique. Avoid having two subtotals which have the same name. It can be just only problematic. Uh, let me remove that one, which is useless. Okay. And then you click on Typos Mesh, which will create a temporary model, okay, which is now selected, which is composed of one subtool, everything is merged. And then starting from that, you will be able to uh, uh, directly, um, mm, let me think about, okay, yes, I will do it. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking at the same time, it's not always easy to talk and do something. Um, uh, what I was starting to say, I forgot, sorry. Uh, yes, you are working on the base mesh, you do the modification and after it will uh, uh, fuse everything. And uh, I'm stupid because why do I do that since I just have one sub tool for this one? Sorry, I, I did something wrong. Uh, I don't need to work with a transpose master because I have no accessories, no props. Um, I'm so used about using Transpose Master for my poses. Uh, let me change for the mask. Take the lasso. And okay. Because I already need to work on the arms to be sure that everything will be clean so far. Um, okay. I will use my select a lasso okay it's better to have access that way to the model okay i'm inverting the mask let me just oh, no. i think i will stay like this transpose rotate Okay, you see what I want to avoid. What I can do also to avoid this kind of problem is using a morph target. That if I do something like this, switching to move. Okay, that way. I don't want more, I just want to have more, more room to sculpt and, and modify. Okay, and now with my morph brush, I can fix, oops, I need to be very careful because I just want to work on the vertices which I modified. I will need to smooth, I will sculpt later, sculpt, sorry, later. Okay. 
need to relax a little bit. Using my move brush. No, there is no polygroup for the body so far, it's all because I just did a quick uh, ziri measure before. I didn't really work on that, but for sure, for the um, uh, when I will work later on uh, the ziri measure more for a global retopology, I will build some part because I will want to keep these polygroups. And uh, using polygroups with ziri measure is a great way also to create some guides which are in my opinion, it's a bit better than um, working with the curves. Um. Why French people are always asking these questions? <laughs> okay, and I think I will just move the, the arms for now. Okay. And you see, I really don't like the topology I have on the on the face. Now it's not very nice. The lips, I don't even speak about it. Uh, but well, so far it's way enough. Um, okay. Uh, then I will start to work just a little bit on the legs, uh, the the shoes. And after that, perhaps I will just go more on top. I don't know yet. I may change my mind in between. Uh, some parts are easy. The only thing I will do is I will try to work as much as possible with sub tools. Uh, again, even if the legs are just connected, I mean, we can just do a single shape, but having more sub tool will give me later more freedom when I will want to split the model. Uh, because I will do a split of my model on, on on the tight, if I'm not wrong, uh, on, on this part, perhaps on the shoes, on this area, just to have multiple parts. Again, like I said, I will probably split uh, uh, on the um, uh, underpaint for underpaint for male. I don't remember. I'm <laughs> Sorry, it's. It's Sunday. <laughs> then I'm trying to anticipate as much as possible. Okay. Then uh, if I want just to do this part on this area, I have multiple ways. I can just do a simple mesh extract because I have a clean retopology. It's easy to do. But like again, like I said, I will want to split some parts on uh, on this location. Then perhaps it bet it is better to start with the shoes and after uh, adding this part uh, uh, just below. Panties, thank you very much. <laughs> Please correct my English in the chat. <laughs> it will be helpful for me. Um, okay, then for the, cho the shoes, um, I will start with a mesh extract, I think, of my model. And uh, then after I will refine again because I want to work with uh, multiple subdivision levels. Um, and I will duplicate my model again, like that. I will uh, just hide the top one. Let's. I will keep this. Off. Oh, this one should be fine. Geometry did it higher and. Uh, I will, oh, let me just look at my grid. Where is my X axis? Okay. I will work on this side and after I will duplicate on the other side. Then I will just isolate uh, that part. Let me remove the symmetry. Okay. Better point of view. Okay, this way, this way. Okay. Then topology brush. I don't know if you know that, but if you click and drag with shift key, it will just um, do a, a strip of polygon, which will just go around. You see, I'm trying, you see, like that. Okay. Let me turn around. Uh, 
I don't know how would be my topology, but well, not a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> it's broken already on this area. <laughs> I just need to remind something about this brush. A lot of people think it's a brush for doing a retopology. It has been designed first to be a brush to create a new topology based on another object. Uh, okay, Thomas, what you say is just retopology. Yeah, retopology is most of the time a technique to uh, 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 just to to do a full new mesh on top of the model. It has not been designed for that, to be honest. It's really, uh, 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 it has been designed to uh, just to do accessories like I'm doing right now. Uh, let me just, I, I, I'm just doing some stroke, but without really taking care of that. Just throwing, okay. I think there is a kind of loop around. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure I will respect exactly the original design, but well. Okay. Uh, it should be flatter. Well, I'll change later my design. Then it's important to cross your polygons. Not always easy. Uh, perhaps I'm doing too much polygons, but well, I can change that just after. Okay. And after we have move brush, ah, I have, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I need to refine that. Oops. Come on. And again, I don't care if my flow of polygon is not perfect. I'm sculpting for 3D printing. Uh, it's not a big deal if it's far to be perfect. Uh, okay. You see, sometimes you have vertices which are very close to each other, which are not nice. And what did I do? <laughs> I did something wrong. I don't know what <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat right now. I will look at it just after. You need to clean sometimes these extra edges everywhere, or you may have some issues. <gasps> Damn, I did some triangles. <laughs> Okay, I need to clean this. Come on, Thomas. Okay, and this one. When you have holes, it's because you have your vertices which are 
not well connected or too close to each other then you need to clean with alt and crossing a curve to clean you see like that let me finish okay and I have just a main part and I will need of course to use the move brush to refine everything. Um, I will uh, work with just a surface now and not a volume and after I will add some thickness to my uh, to my model. Then to do that to give the, the, the shape if you just click outside it will build the volume uh, but connected because I and hide sorry like that. You see, you have the volume, but I don't want to have this volume. Again, I, I, I want just to have a surface. To do that, you simply need to change the draw size to one. And when you click, why it doesn't work? Okay, just to quick click. And now you have your mesh, which has been created. You just need to do split unmasked points to have a new sub tool. Okay, like that. Let me switch to transparency. And now you see your model. You just need to uh, use your move brush. And like before, just refine your shape. And based on that, I will uh, refine to be as close as possible to, uh, to the model. But I need to be outside. Uh, Blunt, um, when you print, do you change the material color to gray or it does not matter? You mean the material inside of the brush? Because you have multiple material to print <laughs> for your printer. If you can just let me know. If you want to see the result with a smoothing, of course, you can apply a dynamic subdivision. And because this is a low resolution mesh, you can very easily uh, just move some vertices, no more, to refine your model. The other way, of course, is to use the Z modeler, uh, the Z modeler sorry, let's say a uh, uh, Dynamesh. And then uh, having a better control, I mean, just a sculpting control, let's say. Uh, I don't know to explain that, but uh, uh, using Dynamesh, of course, you are sculpting. It's a different workflow. Uh, as soon as it's really organic, this is what I'm using. But when I'm doing some props like that, I prefer uh, working with very few polygons. That's why for me, the uh, Z-Modeler has been a great addition to ZBrush because it gives an extra workflow uh, when you are sculpting. And for me, this is really what I love with the brush is you have, in fact, a lot of freedom uh, in terms of the way you are creating your base mesh. And your base mesh, of course, is very important because this is the foundation of what you will uh, sculpt, what you will create. Then for now, I'm just building the volume like that. And after, with the Z-Modeler, I will refine some parts before I guess, <laughs> I'm not sure yet, later uh, refining some other parts. I need to take care about the bottom part. Let me just switch to solo to have a better uh, view of my model. And for the high heels, you say, if I'm not wrong, uh, for the part I will just extrude uh, for the part. Um, yes, I was using the topology brush before. 
Yes, Doug, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, it's it's very difficult for me to talk, explaining at the same time, and looking at the chat, which is on another screen. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, this is part three right now. And uh, no go now, I'm using ZBrush, which is a, a 3D sculpting, modeling, and painting software. Uh, and I'm working on creating a, a figurine uh, which will be 3D printed uh, based on uh, a character of, uh, you can see here, um, from Nier Automata, uh, which is a fantastic game from Square Enix. I mean, Platinum Games. Uh, if you want to see better your model, you can always switch to display properties, double side, like that. Okay. Then for the uh, parts just below, let me make that a little bit more rounded. I'm trying to build the shape and after, again, uh, I will uh, refine that better. Oops, I need to flatten everything. Then, if I want to flatten, let's say this part, I can use the mask, inverting my mask, switching to transpose, and doing a uniform scale on one direction. Like that, you see, everything now is flat. And if I just switch to the top view, I can have a better control to align my vertices that way. And I will do the same for these four polygons. And I will probably rotate that on the back that way. Okay. Let me continue to move slightly. I think it's too high. Should be better like that. Because I think I, I will need to remove this part because I guess I will have this uh, I think I can remove the polygons. Yeah, I will remove them. Okay, it should be better to go on because it's very difficult to know what is the design. Yeah, that's the problem with drawing versus sculpting. <laughs> uh, because you see it's going this way and then arrive this way and perhaps there is a part which go on that, let me. And you see it goes down. I can remove that one, I think. Eventually, I will use the remesher. I don't know for the design, it's difficult to see. I don't like working with floating vertices like that. Well, I'll see that later, anyway. Yeah, it's not clean at all. I should have better flow of polygons for that. Let me just do a quick test. Um, ah, I have hidden polygons, oh, I forgot. Okay. Then now let's switch to my Zimola brush and Selecting these four polygons. 
not Q mesh. Let's switch to extrude. Okay. Uh, scale. Local symmetry to be better. It's a bit high. I think I need to make that a little bit. Uh, yeah. need to change that. I will move the bits of fit later. Oof. Um. Yeah, Doug, in fact, already did <laughs> multiple high heels in, uh, in the past. Um. Hi, Kyle. Um. Okay, it's not related to the chat, <laughs> to the discussion. Uh, okay, move. I will insert an edge uh, in between. Okay, like that. A lot of people just forget that with uh, the Z modeler, uh, transpose is working pretty fine. <laughs> so it's easy to do some refinement. And again, I'm not at the stage where I will do a fine skull for everything. I'm more at the stage that, okay, let's build the shape. And after, we will see. Um, I'm still bothered by that. <laughs> uh, now let's just put everything back and I will see later with what I do on the top. I think at least I remove one loop of polygons and with my uh, delete action poly loop, I will define a loop of polygon like that and even like that and I will see just I'm deleting everything. Okay, if I press my D key, I'm switching to dynamic uh, subdivision to see what is my model with a smoothing on it. You see, it's not very nice. Also, because I have some crease edges until this location and after not anymore. Then let me remove my crease edges, go back to Z modeler, hovering an edge, crease, and edge loop complete. I'm pressing the Alt key, which will increase everything. And now I can see my result without uh, the crease. I notice you see that this part is a bit too small, but you see with and without, it's not exactly the same. Um, what I will do, I will add an extra uh, edge in between, then insert single edge loop. Okay, like that. And I can move. Oops. To be a bit closer to the shape. And after, of course, when I will have have sorry, uh, the model visible, I will be able to uh, refine based on the fit of the character. 
Okay. And you see on this part, we really see the boundaries of the bottom part of the shoe and the top part, which is this uh, edge loop, like that. Then I will add later uh, just a bevel to put a real uh, split in between. It's a little bit too high, I guess, for this part. Okay, and then now edge bevel, edge loop complete, and I can add my bevel all around like that. I want to split also this area because I want to have kind of break off edges. Then I can not do bevel, but switching to insert. You see, we start to see the shape uh, uh, changing a little bit. Now, same for part below. And for the bottom part, like that. We don't have the, the the shape is not good yet, but we start to see the change of uh, of shape to be less rounded, less smooth. Um, Doug, the gizmo is fully customizable. You mean uh, the Zim the Zimolar brush by itself? I'm not sure about what your uh, asking. Uh, Doug, uh, Doug is asking if the standard transpose tool will remain part of the brush and not be fully replaced by uh, the new gizmo. Um, yes, because in ZBrush Core, let's say the light version of ZBrush, I don't like using this light because it's not really light. Um, there is a new 3D manipulator, which name is Gizmo 3D, uh, which is doing the move scan rotate operation. And this is an alternative. Transpose is still in the full version of ZBrush. This is an addition again. Okay, um, 3D printed as by, hello, um, just ask, uh, you can whisper to Kyle if you want, or myself, but I will reply just later. Um, okay, I will do my thickness uh, just after, then I will uh, just do this um, loop of, I don't know the name. Uh, oops, before I will, I think, move a little bit that. Okay, let me remove the solo mode. Uh, now with the smoothing, I'm able to change the shape. And I don't say that my feet are the best one of the character itself. I don't speak about the shoes. Uh, at the end, anyway, I won't keep the internal part of the fit. Then uh, the front part is more rounded. Oops, I picked the bottom once. Something which maybe lead you to some uh, mis-evaluation of what you're doing is to work with the dynamic subdivision when you are uh, uh, moving your points like I'm doing uh, right now. It's better to do that later if you have real subdivision levels and more important when you will put the, the, the volume of your model. And again, uh, I will put some thickness to my shoes just only for the boundaries which will be visible, the internal part, I will try to fill everything to be just one shape. Then uh, I don't care if the feet are not exactly at the good position or, I mean, I just want to have one volume. Think about volume. The constraint about 3D printing are totally different from what you are doing with uh, uh, illustration or video games, real time or production for movies, VFX.
Yes, if you want just to to um, uh, if it's feature request or discussion about request, uh, just for everybody to know, uh, the best thing to do is to send a ticket at the support uh, center of uh, for ZBrush Pixelogic. The address is https uh, uh, www .pixelogic, uh, Sorry, support .pixelogic .com, Sorry which is the best way, again, to uh, contact the support. Okay. And now it will be the time to do this. Um, I don't know the name, which go just on top like that. And like before, I will use my topology brush. Let me just isolate these parts. Oops. Then my topology brush. Let's say from here to here. One, two, three, okay. Like that. It's a little bit bigger than why well, it should be okay, but I need to think about this extra part which is outside, then I will need this uh, extra polygon or perhaps two polygons. I will stretch anyway. Okay, still no thickness so far and very quickly I will add the thickness. I'm splitting my model, split unmasked points and now it's uh, it has been selected. Then, like before, I will just hide the body. Just need to take care about the uh, direction. Because it's always easier to work with just a few points to move. Something which I would like to have is a kind of dynamic thickness, <laughs> just to modify my base mesh and not uh, 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 being able, like the dynamic subdivision, to see with and without. <laughs> okay, then um, it should go on top. Like it's not very logical to have this part to be on the other side. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> In fact, it's not logical. Oh, it's not my logic, at least. Uh, let me see the link. Yeah, it could be an angle. I think it's uh, um, re retou. <laughs> I'm sorry for retous. <laughs> uh, just send me an image to show. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah, just to explain, it should be more in this direction. In fact, it depends on the elevation, but since it's quite uh, high, yeah, I should at least giving some uh, 
Summon Girls, and you're right because it's uh, even on the drawing it's more visible from. Um, okay. This is a good thing we chat like that is we are able to uh, exchange. <laughs> Rotate. Okay. Yeah, then uh, I think the loop, uh, I, I will do something in the other direction because if we keep that, it should be just. Uh, below should be this part should be attached to that one. It's uh, well, a little bit weird, but well, not not a big deal. Um, try to think about something. Let me insert insert an edge loop. You see, if you don't know that, if you apply a mask and insert an edge loop, the brush will apply an edge loop only on the part where it can, it can add uh, this edge loop and then we'll just add some triangles to connect to the other ones. Then uh, I will be able to move these vertices, see more like that, and then connect on this part. I will do something like that. This is what we call a bucket uh, for this part, something like that. At least in the plane, I think this is a name. Okay. Okay, um, I think at least I will start to give some thickness to this part. Uh, it will be better for me to see what I'm doing. Then the modeler, I will put the extrude on polygroup all. And like that, I can give my thickness, which is quite large but I will be able to refine that later if I want. Uh, with the Zimola brush, uh, I can use, you see, like the Q-Mesh uh, polygroup all again, and with my Shift key, you can change like that uh, the, the thickness if you want. But again, because it will be 3D printed, I need to take care about um, this, um, this thickness. Okay. Uh, okay, this part should be just below the thickness I will have here. And let me just come on. Move just below. And I will add an edge loop in between. If I want to keep something nice, same for that one. Oh, it's a bit more rounded. Okay. And even the shoe, I think I will start to give some depth. Q mesh. Um, to do it simple, um, not sure we'll do everything because only the boundary is interesting. But yeah, no, I will do everything. Extrude polygon, all polygons, and you see I'm giving quite some thickness, okay? Because the internal part won't be visible. I will dynamesh everything, but at least. Um, 
if I just show back my model, let me remove, remove the transparency like that. I'm sure that everything is inside and well connected. Okay, but this part need to be deformed. See now with some smoothing. Okay, we start to see the shape. I need to give some crease all around. Later we'll do some bevel, but for now I will just stick with the crease. Crease edge loop complete. This one. Okay. And we must move brush. Okay, be sure that everything is where it should be. And now I don't care if I have a part which go outside because I will just remove that later. that one which need to be refined and even the thickness should be in my opinion a little bit bigger it's not enough well I will stick with that for now And I, I think I have a kind of continuity like that and this edge you see um, I think it's too close for that one. Whoops. What I'm doing is totally useless, but well. <laughs> Oh, you see the thickness on this part, the inside part going outside. It's important to fix this problem. As soon as possible. because it's potentially a lot of problems later for the 3D printing part. Okay. Just want to have separate parts. For um, yes, uh, when I will 3D print everything, I will um, dynamesh some part. The only thing, the benefit of dynamesh is that it will just merge everything and build a volume. Um, then everything will be connected. But uh, in fact, I will do a mix of uh, subdivision levels and dynamesh. It will really, really depend of what I'm doing, which part will be just split later 
or merge as a single part. Like I said, probably this I will do for the legs. I will do a split on top of the shoes on, on, on this area just to connect after. Um, then perhaps the shoes, each shoe will be just merged together as a Dynamesh. But perhaps I will just merge as a Dynamesh. I will do a retopology with the remesher and then project my subdivision levels just to have some clean areas because I will do some refinement. It's really, really a mix of multiple techniques and it will depend on which part, to be honest. Don't forget that please mention at Polyskelt on the chat. It's better for me to uh, uh, to follow your, your questions, please. Okay, uh, look, I think I will put that just lower. It should be more logical that it's connected to this part. Uh, okay, for the whole, I don't know how I will manage that yet. Dynamesh or topology. I don't know. Uh, okay, let me switch to uh, initialize. Not initialize, sorry. Quick cube um, three by um, one by three. Quick cube. Oops. Okay. Better that way. Now switch to Z modeler. Q mesh a single polygon. Okay, I have my hole. I have my symmetry. Move Okay. Too bit too thick. And uh, let me let do mirror and weld. Okay, like that. I just have a single edge. I can bevel this edge. Quick click like that. Now I will be able to uh, insert again some edge loop. And for that one, just Oops. Mm, a bit more. Okay, I will insert some edge loop around. Come on. I'm a really big user of the insert edges and not bevel with uh, the Z modeler to keep my shapes. Uh, well, it depends on what you want to do, but uh, I prefer working that way. Let me think about scale poly loop. Yeah, I thought it could work, but it won't work. Um, let's try. Now I would like to should scale that, but uh, well, not really. Let me just go the old way. Move. Sometimes it's so much faster to go with uh, 
something you already know than trying to deal and finding for hours the best solution for what you want to do. Okay. And for the other part, I will do that uh, later. Okay, uh, it would be okay that way. Oh, perhaps not. Okay, then this sub tool I can do a simple copy. I switch back to, vi to my model to vi. Oof. English is not very easy tonight for me. <laughs> and I will paste it. Just below, I need to find, of course, uh, let me remove my symmetry, move. Rotate. is a part which is of course is not always the, I mean, the easiest one to do is to uh, just find a good position to your model you can use of course uh, multiple hotkeys to do these changes Um, if I'm using only ZBrush or polygonal or NUPS modeler for parts like weapons, stuff like that, uh, now I'm using only ZBrush. Um, I'm coming from the polygonal world. I mean, I, I've been working the develop on the development of a polygonal software before joining Pixelogic. Um, but, and that's why I'm, I really enjoy using the ZModeler um, because it can do so many things that people don't think about. And it's really enjoyable to use. Um, then for other techniques like NURBS, yes, for some stuff, um, it could be great to use NURBS, but I don't have this need because NAPS is great if you want to do real production, if you want to uh, uh, having all these benefits of the accuracy, but also the constraint which come with accuracy. And I'm working a lot with jewelers and people who come from this CAD world and are really looking about the brush because they want to have back this benefit of having this by hand uh, aspect of the design. And uh, well, uh, I don't know to say that, but I, I spent quite some time using NURBS modeling years ago before joining Pixelogic. But now, I mean, with ZBrush, you can do so many things, so different style of design. And also, personally, it doesn't fit what I'm doing for modeling like that. To be honest, between the ZModeler, sculpting tools, uh, uh, other tools, and of course, in 4R8, you will see that later. But uh, the, the, the new Boolean stuff are just I mean, just crazy. But I can't say more. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it should be okay. Now I need to change this, oops, this shape. And please, I don't know what is 
what's happening on the chat but don't, don't ask me more about 4R8 because I won't say more about what has been said already at the Zebra Summit. Uh, I need to have one edge on this area. Okay. There is some comment from Doug. <laughs> I don't know what you, you, you're you trying to say. Uh, perhaps this is a discussion. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a new feature. I invite you looking on YouTube. You have the ZBrush Summit uh, from last year presentation about uh, the new, f I mean, some of the new features of ZBrush for R8. And um, we are presenting one of them, which is a uh, Boolean operation for ZBrush, real Boolean operation, not like something we do with uh, uh, Dynamesh. And uh, I mean, well, you need to see that. <laughs> uh, I need to look at that because this part is connected to just intersecting well uh, i'll see that later okay and i need to connect one part i should have done that at the same time in fact for the alignment well yeah it should be more connected to yeah well i'm sticking to the design it's not Korean, but well Let's do it that way. Mm, yeah, no. Yeah, say I'm fitting to the design, but well, I won't fit the design. <laughs> I'm preferring something which looks correct. Okay, and now my move brush. Okay, let me just change that a little bit. I will need to be sure that everything is in contact and having enough thickness again for 3D printing process after to avoid having weak parts which doesn't have enough thickness because you need to keep in mind that depending on the size you will print, the, the scale of your print, you will have very small part or larger part. If you print the same model in, let's say, uh, um, a sixth of the scale or a fourth of the, the, the scale, you won't have the same thickness for all these small details. Um, I will do some probably a print at a sixth of the scale, something like that then uh, well it's quite big but problems can happen pretty quickly um, no. 
but I really invite you uh, to, to look at the ZBrush Summit presentation. Uh, just search ZBrush Summit 2016 uh, on YouTube and you will find the, the video where Paul and Joseph are showing this function in action. Okay, then I just need a small cube now. Uh, okay, just a two by two should be okay, quick cube. The modeler, insert edge. should be uh, let me mirror on well And again, I will copy my sub tool, go back on this one, not this one, sorry, this one, and pasting that. Rotate. Mm, I should change the thickness a little bit. That's a good thing about 3D printing is if it's not perfect, not exactly aligned, you don't care. As soon as, at, as visually speaking, it's aligned. <laughs> okay. I need to think about the location of this part, which should be just in the middle. Let me try that one. Move.
and what I need to do is to add a small hole then let me insert an edge loop which go on both direction and then um, uh, yes and you have the splits like that I can go on the other side I just click once and like that I have the same uh, hole which has been added added and I can do a Q mesh polygroup all and I should connect oops I've been too far like that then I just need to refine now to just um, I don't to say that just to go around this part <laughs> yes um, yes 3d printed as P spy no there is no command for me <laughs> Carl you need to fix that <laughs> switch to solo mode okay no more solo mode transparency And I will do my best to connect everything to be sure that all the parts are uh, in contact, which is really, really, really important for the 3D printing process. I'm, I'm always mentioning this 3D printing process, etc., etc. But trust me. If you try to anticipate as much as possible, this is way a lot less post work that you will have to do uh, after. And this is not the best part for 3D printing this post work. <laughs> Oops, I think something is wrong. No. Okay, then now that I I have all the parts, let's say for now at least, um, I will switch uh, to real subdivision levels. But before that, I will remove my crease edges because crease edges that you can see around here are very sharp, too sharp. And um, well, you don't see shoes with very sharp edges like that. Yeah, I'll say, I, I know that the, the, the buckle is wrong. It should be on the other side. <laughs> I know that, but I really want to fit the, the design. You see, it's totally wrong. And I just fixed to put that more on this area. Just, I move it a little bit. It should be on, oops. It should be like that. Well, uh, 
why my rotation is going in all direction. Woo! <laughs> well, it should be more something like that. I agree. Uh, but, well, I think I'll continue with the design uh, like this. Okay. Perhaps I will change that later. I don't know. But for now, I'll stick with this design. And, okay. Then, like I said, I want to remove... Oops. I want to remove my uh, crease edges. Let me just fix that. Okay. Then, in my crease, I will uncrease all for that one. This one, same, increase all, and that one, I think I don't have any kind of polygroups, but, well, okay. Then if I put my dynamic subdivisions, this is what I have, then I will try to refine a little bit these edges to be a little bit more well aligned. Yeah, this is too thin. Then I have two solutions. If I want to have something which is uh, which have a, a better flat area, if I want to keep this angle at this location with the Z modeler, I can try to just insert some edges like that. You see, I still keep my angle, and this is flat all around. Okay, and the same for oops. that well I don't think I need that one okay this one Okay, now the shoes. Ah, I need to take care of that. And for this part, I will do a small bevel because this is a clean edge loop. Transparency mode. If we are not talking about SLS 3D printer, it's because, yes, it's quite expensive. Even if now you have one printer which is under the, 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 the $10,000 like price, but it's quite expensive. And the problem is, for at least for the brush, um, you have this kind of powder effect, which can be great for some type of models, but for, let's say, figurine, you don't have very smooth and clean surfaces. Um, then that's why Polyjet uh, technology or SLAs, uh, SLA sorry, or DLP are way better. After, of course, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to print metal stuff directly straight, straight from the printer, this is the way to go. But for what I'm doing, at least, 
I don't see the benefit of uh, SLS printers. Uh, I want to have some bevel all around, and um, but mm, not sure that I will have something nice. Yes, I want to have something nice for that. Then what I can do is uh, slide edge. Oops. I need to think about, I mean, I need to remind about saving my model. Yeah, no, this is not the way to go. Okay, yes, let's save now. <laughs> Uh, for the printer I'm using, I'm using a Form 1 Plus and I hope to switch to a Form 2 before the end of July as soon as possible, but well, I need to find the money. <laughs> Which is always the problem. Uh, well, I know what I will do. Sometimes I'm thinking too much. And let's try an inset. Inset single poly group inset region. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice like that. Let me just Sludge, sl sludge, oof, slide a little bit the edges. You see, we are very far from sculpting so far, but well, it's working pretty fine, I would say. And even that, if I want to stitch this one, stitch two points, let's say midpoint, first, second. It's okay there, there is no other triangles. Transparency. Even that one, if I want to just Let's clean a little bit the topology. Oops, sorry. Not so good hotkey. Okay, let's say it's good so far. At least for now. Let's do some mirror and weld. Uh, ah. I'm in local symmetry. Then now, okay, <laughs> it's better like that. Okay. 
I feel that the shoes and feet are ah, something go seems wrong like that seems to be too small should be more that size I don't have this impression let me check but yeah yeah it seems to be small what you think about that one yeah I know because it's yeah still small Okay, now let's do this part for the legs. At least I just just do the, this area. Um, who will do that? I think I will just simply sculpt my model. Um, perhaps I'll do some radial symmetry, and after I will just adapt to my model. Um, let's try something. Uh, I will use my cylinder primitive. Going to initialize. I can change the inner radius at least. The size. Mm, yeah. Six. And uh, I need a little bit more for my subdivisions, 32. Um, let me try to see if I'm aligned. No. Okay, let's try that. Make polymesh 3D. Transform, activate symmetry, radial symmetry on the y axis and say 46, correct? Yep. And I will do the opposite, I will do 23, half. And at the same time, I will do. Um, ah, I can't. Forgot about that. And radial symmetry is great for that. If you have these kind of patterns, of course, after I will need to adapt to the model to fit the shape, but uh, it's a huge time saver um, to work that way. Then I can subdivide. Continue with my move brush. And because this is more organic, I don't care about uh, having some parts which are too much deformed.
my Damsona brush. Sorry, when I'm focusing on something, I can't, I can't talk at the same time. Much dot kills a dot. <laughs> okay, go back, better go back in history. Okay, let's stick with something like that. It may be too much. Want a bit of clay polish could do the trick. Again, let's copy past. I think it's too. I need to change it a bit the proportions. And I. Thing that I have the death is a bit too much. Okay, then copy and past, copy. Okay, 
transparency. Let's slow, make it a bit station level slower. Approximately okay. And I know that I will do some refinements. I know that after looking at this model later today or tomorrow, say, oh my God, I need to change that and that. Well, you can always spend your life updating and improving the same model. <laughs> yes, I will save just after my mirror and... Ah, okay. I forgot that. Let me kill my subdivision levels. Doing my mirror and weld and now reconstruct. Once more. And it should be okay. And then it will crash. <laughs> no, that's okay. I have my subdivision levels. Well, it's a bit too much. The lower. And let's save. And as you can notice, I'm saving mainly my uh, as uh, tools and not projects. Uh, there is a reason because when I'm saving my tool, it doesn't save the story, the position of the camera, all the other tools, just the current tool, and it creates smaller file size. Um, but times to times, I'm saving my project because I have these temporary models. Perhaps it could be useful for something else. But right now, I'm just doing some improvement which doesn't need to save these extra files. And the history, to be honest, while I'm sculpting, I need my history. But as soon as I'm dropping my model on in my subtools, merging everything, I don't really need it anymore. Then that's why for me ZTL is more convenient. Yeah, I think I need to legs a little bit, a bit too much. Sorry, uh, doing some changes at the same time. With the perspective, it should be better. Let me fix this model. I did that on the other temporary model, and that's why I need to re redoing it. Okay, I will need to fix the um, the shoes, which a little bit too much on the inside part. Should be more on this edge. Then let me fix it right now. And I know I'm switching a lot from one part to the other part, but as soon as you see something, for me at least, 
I think it's important to do the correction because after you, will, you may forget. You may forget, sorry, about it. Okay. Then, um, I think I will do the panties as soon as I will do the pose because I will have too much deformations. Let's try, let me look at the, what time is it? Two hours. Um, yeah, I think I will try to do some part. I will do at least these parts. Um, uh, which workflow? This one, of course, will be the same as the legs, just a different thickness. I don't need to build something different, at least for now. Because I don't want to start this bottom part now, because it will take a little bit of time. I think I will focus on this part, at least this one. And for that, I guess I will start with some... Mm, I think I will dynamesh everything to sculpt and after I will do a retopology to create a thickness and working more accurately. Um, uh, Sedokun, I'm not sure about what you're saying. Okay, then what I will do, I will start with that one and let me hide it and I will dynamesh off. No, I will sculpt it directly on top of that. Um, clay build up. Why my clay is working like that? I know, dynamic subdivision. Okay. <laughs> if you have sometimes some behavior which you feel looks weird, it's most of the time because you have the dynamic subdivision which is uh, enabled. Then look about that. It may be the cause, the problem, where the problem comes from. I don't know how is the behind part, then I will try to guess. <laughs> I will do then two parts because anyway, I will probably do a split of my 3D print under the, pr the breast on this area. Then I will just do the top part and after the bottom part and this part separately. And again, I'm working on the shape. I have the knot, knot behind. Ah, yes, I'm doing that uh, uh, sometime to use the poly painting uh, on my model, uh, just to draw some um, uh, action lines, whatever, I mean, some information that I will fit. It's visible on some of my, on my videos that I have on YouTube. I need to find some back of made clothes. I didn't look at my references so far for that. And damn standard. Oops, let me solo my model.
I'm just looking for the volume right now. Like I told you, I will do a retopology on that. But at least it will be uh, on the good location. Let me continue with the volume. By doing that, I will have uh, my polygon sticking to the model. And after, of course, I will just refine like I did until now. Same for the shoes. The process is kind of the same. And I will move my vertices and after I will add the thickness to my model. Oops. Okay, then let's start and I will... Mm, I think I will sculpt this part later. Okay, then delete lower. Let's hide the other polygons. Delete, sorry, the hidden polygons. Delete hidden. Okay. I just have now pure polygons and I can do my retopology. Um, no, I don't think I will do a test print for the next, uh, uh, during, I mean, be before the next presentation, because so far I, I don't think it's enough. Of course, I did the shoes, a small part for um, uh, around the leg, I don't know the name. Uh, even in French. Um, no, I, I don't think I will do the next text print when I will be done with the main part for the clothes. Um, perhaps, I don't know yet. I mean, I don't see the benefit to spend a lot of time to prepare, to optimize, to even if I don't optimize that much. Uh, I prefer keeping that uh, for when it's really needed. Uh, then my topology brush. The thickness will be internal this time. Oops. Let's try to fit the shape as much as possible. See, then my sculpting is just a kind of assistant for me. I could have done something else. But well, this is the way I'm working.
Okay, and then let's just do an extra loop. Sometime I'm thinking that I could do that with just a Z modeler after. <laughs> why it doesn't connect. Ah. Sometimes the topology brush is... Um, See, I don't see why it doesn't connect there. Okay, now it's connecting. Uh, I think I did something wrong <laughs> because I lost This one. You see, if there is no obligation to do what I did before, because you could do that directly with uh, um, the existing part of your model. But well, let me try to connect from here. to what I will connect. Mm. <laughs> That's why also sometimes I'm using uh, the Z spheres <laughs> to do some topology. <laughs> no, Tomo, this is stupid what you're doing right now. I know that some people will say, oh, what is this topology is doing? Again, I'm working for 3D printing and I don't care <laughs> at all. Uh, uh, I think when, oh no, sometimes it creates some triangles and uh, why I can't connect to this vertex.
you know what? Uh, I should have done some retopology with the remesher. I don't know why. You know, sometimes you are not really thinking about what you're doing. And you are spending quite some time on some stuff like that. And I'm not reading the comments. Yes, I should have done the remesher. Uh, I'm not using the mesh extract. Um, I know that it could work, of course, but um, I prefer to have less polygons again. Then I will even go to a very low resolution zero measure. But by doing that, I'm spending some time now, for sure. Uh, I'm losing some time, but at the end, I've, I will have few points. Then just to modify the shape, to re to be as close as possible to what I want before switching to the scripting process. I mean, I have full control on, of, on what I'm doing right now. Then, yes, for me, it's worth the time I'm spending on that. I may refine the topology somewhere, but uh, uh, I think I should go more to add more edges like that. why it doesn't want to connect. Sometimes the topology brush is... Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I will do that just... I'll see that later. Control Z. Okay. After it's really a matter of workflow, uh, like I said, this is my workflow. It may not be the best. I know that some people may work in a different way, but uh, well. What's nice what I did here. I think my symmetry is having some issues. Okay. And I told you that in the past, sometimes it's way faster to redo what you just did than trying to fix your problems. Let me just Remove like that. Okay, I'm close to be done, at least for that. <laughs> I don't like such topology, I should clean on this part, I should remove some triangles. I will see that later. I don't know why I don't have a quad here. Ah, come on. Well, 
well uh, why I don't know this one doesn't want to exist and what I will do I will create now my topology which is uh, oh no I have some thickness yeah it was at two why I can't read it okay now it's done splits and mask it points I'm selecting that and now I can fix my topology meaning that I can go with Z modeler having this edge bridge two edges one second I can remove I can increase everything increase all I can move my vertices I don't like that No, should f mm -hmm. Why do we have these polygons visible? Mm. Let's switch to double side view. No, it should be okay. should split my edges like that well I will do that later it's not a big deal for now uh, just about the remesher huh? just to see what could be the result of the remesher on that this kind of shape because we spoke about that just earlier the remesher will let just go to very low resolution and the remesher you see what I have for now I have for me way too much polygons way too much polygons and I prefer sticking with that and you see relaxing a little bit my polygons that um. <laughs> I said that a lot because yeah I, I will fix that later it's something I'm saying a lot because I know I will come back to my model um, I'm not the type of artist trying to uh, do everything fine at right away and I know I can't do that <laughs> Uh, I'd put the model like that. I'll say it will be inside and I need to move. Oops, not one. I'm using now the dynamic subdivision just to define the good thickness. Don't forget that. Oh, okay. I need to be way closer from the breast. And as soon as I will be close enough, I will add some edge loop. Don't forget that the clothes have some thickness as well. Let's put some extra one edge loop at least here 
to be closer. Yeah, it's not very good to have this shape here. Uh, should have done that in another way. Then what I can do is uh, let's edit the topology. I think I will edit it. Um, let me just refine that because as soon as I will done with the thickness, it will be a little bit too late. Even if it won't be really visible, but you know, as soon as you subdivide your model, if you see some pinch like that or like that, it's not very good. And I need to have nice edge loop all around my my model. I just need to fix this part now. Okay, then to fix my topology, I just have my Z spheres because if I want to change the flow of polygons to have Nash, uh, Nash, oh la 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 la, sorry, nice edge loops, I need to uh, to work with uh, many of Z spheres, I guess. Uh, I could merge, you see, uh, something like that. Then I could stitch at least these vertices now. Uh, stitch. Oops, sorry. Stitch two points. I have subdivision levels. Okay, at least it has been stitched. You see now that I have, I don't have any more the shape that I have before on this location my edge loop all around is nicer than what I had before. But for this part, it's not good at all. Then I will save first, because it's been a while, I didn't do what I will do now. Then let's avoid some issues. Now I won't use the Z-Molar and Bridge for that because I do more polygons. I need to add some extra edge loop all around, having some extra vertices, and I prefer to have a better control. Be sure that I have my loops everywhere. It's And even on this part, let me just go to solo, that I need to have an edge loop just below. I really need to fix that. I should have think about that before, but you see, I'm not doing a lot of real topology, not anymore, then, uh, well, something from the past <laughs> for me. Let me clone my uh, these parts, okay? And um, let's use my Z sphere like that. Uh, going in rigging, select mesh, this one, edit topology. Why is my topology? Okay. Why? Oh. Select topo. <laughs> Better that way. Um, let me do it another way because I'm not doing that the good way. Let me duplicate, clone this one as well. I will append my Z sphere to do the retopology. And then uh, for my uh, topology, I will edit, sorry, select the topology, which is this one, and I will edit it. Then let me fix 
that and Sorry, I'm adding some vertices at the same time. Why my topology is going that way? Well, okay, now I want to connect that. Then let's fix what I have here. Okay, now I have my edge loops with some holes. And I think I will go with some triangles on this area of, yeah. Okay, then it should be okay. We'll do mirror and well just after. And then what I did before was to add that. I'm not as fast as I would like today. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, then it's okay. It's okay. Well, I have some extra triangle. I'm fine with removing some of them. Okay, then I have my adaptive skin density, which is at one. I can do my preview, which is okay. And I can do my make poly mesh foolish. At this stage, I just have one half. Uh, let me just mirror, mirror and weld and everything should be okay. I can switch to my move brush. If I press my D key, my boundaries are nicer except for that part. Then I can switch to Z model brush, stitch two points to the middle points. Why it doesn't work? Okay, wrong click, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Fixed. I should have considered this problem earlier. Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, insert just below this new topology. This one is the old one. This one is the newest one. Delete. Okay, then move brush again with the symmetry. It's better. Okay, now I will do the top part. I just do the thickness now and I will do the details uh, later. <laughs> Again, sorry for saying that. Um, 
Okay, no questions so far. Okay, oh, just before, let me remove the crease edges. Geometry, crease, and crease all. And now let's do the thickness of my model by using the Z model brush and solo. Let me display the double. Uh, yes, I will do it internally. Uh, display properties, double side, Q mesh, all polygons with quite some thickness. And as you can see, my normals have been flipped because I did that internally. And if I do a flip now, my vertices, are, I mean vertices, my polygons are on the in the good direction. Um, I will right away using my move brush in uh, sorry in transparency mode. Uh, why I lost my ghost transparency transform uh, ghost transparency move just slightly. Okay, you see I press the D key to switch to dynamic subdivisions. Okay. And that's why when you are adding some clothes on top of the character, you may not have the need to sculpt all the details. I did way too much when I did the, the body, but it won't be fun without that, I think. <laughs> and now I will add some edge loop on the borders the modeler bevel same for oops everywhere Need to move this part below. I may need to change the shape of the breast because they are, I mean, they are, mine are already big, but this one are way bigger and more on the top because she's falling. I will probably change that. I don't know yet. And like before, I will go back to this shape. Hiding that. 
and with my topology brush again there is less unknown for this part Now let's fix the topology. Come on. Splitting that, split unmasked points, it's just below. Move brush. Take care of the size of the move brush, which can be sometimes too big for what you want to change. Transparency, yeah. I need to find the good transition between both shapes. Put my crease and crease, no crease and crease all. And I think I will put the thickness right away. See, I think I'm doing again the mistake for the edge loop on this area, but well, it's not a big deal. And I think I will stitch that. Uh, I bevel the bottom part. I mean, I bevel all the, let's say, opening of the t-shirt part. It's... Uh, I have the question about why I'm so much about details, uh, detailed topology uh, on these areas. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, like I said in the past, I spent quite some time in my life doing topology things uh, before using the brush. I mean, for years, and that's why this is kind of an old uh, habit uh, from me. But I know that as soon as you are working more on the details, which is not the 
the stage right now. I'm just building some shapes. I sculpt no details on the top part, on this part, even on the shoes. Um, but as soon as I will do it, when I will use my sculpt brush, if I have a nice topology below my uh, my subdivision levels, then when I will sculpt, I will have a better quality for my sculpt. The, the, the organization of my polygons will have an impact on the quality of my brush strokes and the shape I, I, I will build. And that's why topology, even if it's not a big deal, that's why if I have some triangle, well, it's not that much important. But as soon as you have some extraordinary, extraordinary points, when you have one vertex sharing uh, uh, and um, and um, um, even and even, I mean three, five, seven edges. You have some pinches. That's why it's important to look about that. Again, this is more by experience that I am saying that. Um, okay, Z modeler, Q mesh, all polygons. Okay, then let's remove the transparency. I will need to change that. Why it's hidden? We are very far from the end, to be honest. <laughs> it takes quite some time to uh, reshape everything. But well. I enjoy so much sculpting and modeling. And yes, I will save. <laughs> Thank you to remind me to do it. Most of the time, I'm trusting too much the software. And I mean, globally, whatever, it's Photoshop or other software. It's, um... OK, now let's do some bevel. Um, I may not bevel because I have some triangle here and I'm sure it may not be as nice as I would love. Oh, it should be okay. No, you see, when I'm beveling, it's, yeah, oh no, it's okay. No, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah, I can't bevel on bevel, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I will go with... Mm, no, I'll stay like that. You see, I need to have something. Of course, I will refine that when I will really do the pose uh, of the character. Not the full pose, but more the pose like she is right now. With, uh, you see, I'm... 
I, I need to ah, I don't know to do that uh, on the back just to bend more the back and uh, and for that I, I will move up the breast uh, at that time and refining the shape and because oh yes another reason why I have this all subdivision levels and this low resolution topology is when I will do my pose uh, I will use transpose master like I started to do at the beginning for nothing and um, because I have very few polygons, it will be very easy to refine my pose without any kind of troubles. Trouble, sorry. If you are using Dynamesh, you will have way more polygons, then you won't have the same flexibility. Yeah, so maybe different. Okay, but you see this part on this area, I won't do different topology. It will be just by sculpting that will do this kind of details uh, like that. And if I want to start doing that right now, yeah, I can do it a little bit. Let me look. At what time is it? Um, yeah, it's already always it already been three hours. Well, let's sculpt a little bit. Okay, I'm divining slightly. And with my damp soda brush, I will start. You see, because I have a good flow of, poly of polygons, it's easier to uh, follow the shape like that. You see, I have few polygons, but I'm able to follow the loops of polygons. The small area you see here is just a part of the body. And if I'm switching to transparency mode, like that, okay, it's better. And I'm just bending slightly because I don't have a lot of polygons so far. Then I'm very far from the detail stage. But I'm starting to change slightly the volume. I will need way more subdivision levels to do what I'm doing right now in a clean way. But I'm following my, my loops. Yeah, I don't have enough polygons so far for that. Then now I have more polygons because I subdivide a little bit more. And I need to consider that based on the scale, I will print my model, some details will be very visible while some of them won't be visible. Or almost not not really visible. I really need to keep that in mind because I will may need to insist on some part to be more visible, to give more depth uh, on my strokes. Or if I put some noise, let's say, having a, a higher strength to start seeing this noise A trick I'm always using is, okay, let's say my model will be uh, 20 or 18 centimeters and I have a ruler, a regular ruler, 
like that uh, in centimeters sorry i'm not in inches and i'm looking on my screen to say okay this is let's say 20 centimeters this is this size okay and you can't see that but i put that on my screen and see okay i'm just doing the measurement of my model uh, to see on my screen uh, the, the, the size right now what i have on my screen you don't see it but it's 21 centimeters then the size of my model i see on my screen will be at this size in the real world almost at this size in the real world then i can see at this scale on my screen if i see the details or not let me remove the transparency okay and oops sorry i did uh, press the f key i really need to rework my fit which are too small uh, let me doing the measurement again this is 18 now it's yeah almost 20 a little bit more okay and it should be 20 now yeah this is almost 20 then okay just with my eyes do i see the details that i'm sculpting or not if i don't see them there is a high chance that the printer won't be able to print them uh, of course you can look cl uh, uh, very closely to your model but if you are almost uh, in the uh, you have no way to see them now like i said it's useless to work on them then that's why if you really want to have this detail visible with the printer you will need to make them more visible than increasing the contrast of your details uh, then if i want to see you see this border here you see if i'm just at this edge at this size as you see we see slightly this edge but if we really want if we really want to see it then it means that you need to go and really increase this edge and eventually doing you see the opposite i'm pressing the alt key now and if you you see now we see a little bit more but because i push inside and after i pull it on the other side then locally i'm increasing this contrast I know it's not very easy to understand if you never printed, but as soon as you will start to print one day, you will see that uh, if you don't insist enough on some details, they won't be visible at all. That's why the high contrast is very, very important. And you can smooth a little bit to make something more uniform and after a second time inside and if you want to put some stitching pattern yeah it's it's great to put some stitching but this is typically the small details if you want to see them you need to have very very high contrast especially if you are printing to a small size if you're printing something which will be i don't know 40 centimeters it's okay, it will be visible. But if you print something which is very small, especially if you are sending your model to a company like Shapeways or Sculpteo and you are, you are selecting the high resolution print which is very expensive, uh, you may print smaller than just increase the contrast to make that way more visible. And because it won't be symmetrical, that part, let me remove the symmetry, going lower in resolution, and doing this part which is slightly different. A 
having a soft transition. Always try to cross if you can your strokes. Let me change of material. Uh, which one I will pick? Perhaps a gray one for now. I have too much specular. And then for this part, I will use my damp soda brush and start to inverting the stroke while digging inside slightly. smoothing a little bit. I will do multiple passes just to have something a little bit nicer to relax the topology. But I will need to do these small accessories to put them and then uh, it will be better to work around. When I mean around, I mean uh, I it will be easier to consider this, uh, these models. I will finish this part quickly and after I think I will end the stream. around here, one which is here, and one which is, let's say, here. Sorry, this is some kind of placeholder. Oops, I don't have my symmetry. Let's avoid that for now. And then uh, let me do a quick cube. Let's divide it once without smooth and now with smooth. Yeah. Okay. And again, uh, let's copy past that. It. 
Let's duplicate, Control Shift D. Not good. I need to move that down. Okay. I may bend that a little bit. Control Shift D to duplicate. Okay, move and rotate. Yeah, in fact, I, I did this kind of mark bet between both parts. It's too much. Then let's move that a little bit. Okay, sh transparency. Let's let put back the symmetry and fix that which is too much. Polish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one need to be rotated slightly. Just for the fun. Need to remove my symmetry.
will need way more refinement. Since I don't have a lot of polygon for that. Okay, I will stop it for now. Yeah, it's still need a lot of work. Uh, I will probably change the scale of the shoes and fit. Oh, I need to work on the leg. It's a, yeah. Weird shapes. That's why changing of matcaps time to times can be very helpful because you will see your model in a totally different way. But so far, it's moving forward at least. Okay, uh, do you have some questions for now? Edge polish and edge polish plus alt and how to... Uh, yeah, Michael Pavlovich may do his crazy way. Uh, there is multiple ways. I'm using a lot of damn standard to do the opposite and after doing the edge polish or edge polish, sorry, on um, Trim Dynamic, or oh, I'm using a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, the um, clay polish function to, to do sharp edges like that. And I'm blending that with um, the, um, the morph target. You see, just as an example, the clay polish now on the on the head already give a better shape for the lips. And this is what I did for the hairs for the um, the model I presented at the beginning. I'm using a lot of the clay, uh, a lot of the clay polish uh, for the hairs and all these kind of things. Uh, I don't know if I will go to paint um, the model because I'm not really a good painter because I never really practiced except years ago but not that much even if I have the airbrush and all these kind of things but while well, already having doing a good sculpt is not that easy then <laughs> adding on top of that the painting yes I would love but um, perhaps I will try to see if I can work with some Japanese painters because I have in my contact some Japanese artists whose their job is just to do figurines painting and perhaps I will see just a little bit expensive but it's worth uh, the cost when you consider the work you, you're doing on that okay um, then thank you very much to um, to have spent this time watching me in this uh, this process I was expecting to do more today to be honest uh, I wanted to uh, to do a little bit more but well um, it's at least moving forward uh, I will continue of course in a week this next uh, Sunday then thank you very much just connect to the brush live connect to our YouTube channel uh, to watch all the past presentations the ask the brush um, see the artists communicate with them I mean it's very important for us to, to discuss uh, uh, all of us uh, about 3d uh, sculpting painting the workflow and things like that um, and subscribe to the Twitch channel, it's very important uh, because like that you can be notified for the each presentation which will start. Um, and anyway, um, see you very soon. Bye bye.